In the module five assignment template, the first thing you wanna do is include a brief overview of the purpose of this analysis. Again, you're pretending you work for this real estate firm. You're helping them to analyze data. And the scenario here that you're working with is a rep wants to put out an advertisement that his home sales, the average cost per square foot is above the average cost per square foot for all the home sales in the Pacific region. And we don't want any false advertising out there, but he really wants to put this out there because if he sells above the average, he'll get more clients. So we're gonna test his claim with a hypothesis test to see if his home sales really are above the average home sales. So the population value that we need to be testing with our hypothesis test is uh, for the population of the Pacific region, what's the average cost per square foot of the home sales? That average, that mean of cost per square foot is our population parameter. And now we wanna write a null and an alternative hypothesis based on um, this claim that the sales rep is making. And he's claiming that his average cost per square foot of home sales, $275, is higher than the population average. Our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis, I'm in 5.2 here, our null needs to be a statement of equality. And remember with hypothesis tests, we never actually prove the null to be true. We gather our sample and we either have enough evidence to reject the null in favor of supporting the alternative as being true, or our sample just doesn't give enough evidence to uh, reject the null. We don't prove it to be true, we just don't reject it. So we actually want to set this population average cost per square foot to be exactly equal to the claim our sales rep is making. And so just with a, a number line here, we're going to say this is our null hypothesis that the population average cost per square foot is right there. It's the same as our sales reps. Our alternative hypothesis needs to be that the average cost for the population is actually one of these numbers less than something down here, 274, 273, anything less than where our sales rep is at, which is 275. And so we're gonna check our sample. If it gives us enough evidence to reject the null, to reject this value here, then we'll have enough evidence to accept the alternative, which is that the population average is actually somewhere less than $275, somewhere left of that, somewhere less than that. And that's what we want. We want to have enough statistical evidence that the population value is somewhere down here, which means the rep has a higher average than the population average. So you'll need to do a left tail test because your alternative hypothesis is less than. And the name of your test is just a hypothesis test for the population mean. And specify which distribution you're gonna be using. We got to use the uh, T distribution and we need to use that. We use the T distribution whenever we do not know the population standard deviation, which is typically the case, we don't know that. So we have to use the T distribution and so to, to describe your sample, it's actually already been gathered for you. So just um, reference that you're using the information in this document here. And you'll want to make sure you're in the correct tab here. We're in the Pacific region. And the directions want you to gather or look at a 1,001 home sample. That is exactly what this document has. Uh, there's 1,001 home sales listed here. And we want to be looking at the cost per square foot of each of these home sales. So I'm going to go ahead and just delete these two columns that I don't need. So now we're just looking at the information that we want, which is the cost per square foot of the home sales. You need to list the descriptive statistics. The directions say we want to have the mean, the median, the standard deviation, and also the size of our sample. I'm not gonna go through actually calculating all those in here because you'll all be using the same exact data. We're using that same sample of 1001, so I'd be giving those answers away. Uh, but you can either use the formulas. So for 
the mean, you can use equals average and then select the data equals median for the median. And we have a sample here. So stdev.s for sample to get the standard deviation of your sample. You can do that method or you can go up to data and go through the descriptive statistics method. And that returns all those answers all at once. And if you need more assistance on doing that, um, click on this link here in the guidelines. You'll also want to create a histogram for your data, and you can get more information about that here. When creating the histogram, you are going to have to decide how many bins uh, there's going to be for your data, and essentially how many bars they're going to, there are going to be in your histogram. And there's no specific right or wrong answer, but you do want enough so that you can really see the shape of the data. Is it symmetric? Is it bell-shaped? Um, is it skewed left, skewed right? Are there outliers? Are there gaps? Things like that. So make sure you have enough bins to view that. And you also don't, uh, you know, too many bins can be overkill. So try to get a good balance there. And you also want to know what the largest value in your data is. So equals max will help you um, find the largest value quickly. And equals min for minimum will help you find the minimum value quickly. And that way you can start your bin right where your minimum value is uh, beginning and then you know where your maximum is so you can split up that range of numbers into the number of bins that you want. So after looking at that we want to specify whether the um, conditions have been met to perform our hypothesis test. And we'll be using the t distribution to perform our hypothesis test. This is in 5.2. So you want to briefly talk about these three uh, bullets here that these assumptions and conditions are met. Uh, one, that our sample was randomly gathered. We're assuming that's the case for this data we're given. We have independence here. Looking up the cost per square foot for a given home, that doesn't change the cost per square foot of another home. Um, you know, so gathering our sample, we're not, um, each data value we get is not affecting the other data values. And then to use the t-distribution, the overall population either needs to be somewhat normal or you need to have a sample size larger than 30. It can always be used when the sample size is significant or sufficiently large and there's no like extreme outliers. And so we definitely have a sample size larger than 30. That's what you'll want to talk about for that third bullet. And so we're going to use our sample data to calculate a t-test statistic. And the significance level was stated as 0.05. Right here, significance level alpha equals 0.05. So use that. And so now to calculate the test statistic, use this formula here, or in 5.2. Your test statistic is going to be the sample mean, which use your 1001 data values, whatever value you get for the sample mean, and subtract your value you're assuming in your null hypothesis that the population mean is equal to, which we're all using 275. So do that subtraction. And then on bottom, you're taking the sample standard deviation and dividing by the square root of the sample size, which is 1,001. And be very careful to follow the order of operations when performing this calculation. I think it's helpful to do the top separately and get a result. So do this subtraction, get a single number answer, and then convert the bottom to a single number, number answer as well. So do that division, get a single number answer, and then just take your number on top, divide by your number on bottom, and that gives you your final solution here for the test statistic. To um, keep moving forward with this test, you need to know your degrees of freedom, and that's your sample size minus one. And now you're going to use Excel here to get the p-value, the probability value, that corresponds to your test statistic. The possible formulas to use are over here uh, using a left-tailed test. You're going to want to use this one right here. Uh, so you can notice as you start typing them in Excel equals t dot, um, your options show up, and you want the left-tailed. It says it's left-tailed there. And this one says it's two-tailed. This one's for right-tailed, but less than alternative hypothesis, we want the left-tailed one. And the arguments you want to put in, that t-statistic is what the first thing you want to list, so whatever that comes out to, 
I'm just going to write four here, and then put a comma, and then write your degrees of freedom. So one less than your sample size. And then you want to hit true. All right. You're always going to write true because that gives then the cumulative pro um, probability of getting a sample like the one you did or one even more into the tail of the distribution. And I'll go show a quick illustration of what I'm talking about now, um, but I do just want to highlight four is not the correct thing to write here. I was just putting a number in to move through the formula. You're going to want to write what the result you get for your for the t-test statistic based off of our sample data. All right, so here's a rough uh, picture of a t-distribution. Looks a lot like a normal distribution, symmetrical. The mean is right in the center. So our null hypothesis is that the population mean is 275. So we're doing a left-tailed test here. We're going to see what the probability is. That formula we just did in Excel gives us what is the probability that our sample mean is where it is or even further to the left, further out here into the left-hand side of this distribution. So let's say your sample mean came out, you know, right here, some value a little bit less than 275. That, um, that formula then gives you the probability that you're, or that you will get a sample that is that far away from the mean to the left or even further, that it's somewhere within that range I just shaded in there. And so the way hypothesis testing is working is if we get a sample that gives us a sample mean really far away from 275, really far out here in the left-hand tail, then the probability of getting a sample like the one we did or even further into the tail, it's going to be a really, really small probability. So if that's the case, there's two, there's two things that could have happened. One, we just got a really unusual, really rare sample, and that, that could happen, and we just happen to be out here in the, a tail where some rare samples exist. Or our original assumption that the distribution is centered on $275, that that's the correct population mean, that could be incorrect, and that could be uh, more plausible than us getting a very rare sample that has a very small percentage chance of occurring. So when we do get a result for our p-value that's very small, that is below alpha, this is kind of the visualization of what's happening, um, it's going to cause us to reject the null hypothesis. It's more likely that this is incorrect, our null is incorrect, than for us to get a sample test statistic that is really far out here in the tail of the distribution. And so we'll have enough statistically significant evidence to reject our null hypothesis in favor of the alternative, which remember the alternative was that the actual population mean was something less than 275, somewhere down here. Well, if the population mean is really somewhere down here, closer to where our sample actually showed up, then it would make a lot more sense that we got a sample down here if the population mean was really somewhere to the left of 275, something less than 275. All right, so that is uh, a visualization. Uh, so now back in the assignment, make sure uh, you actually describe where your p-value and test statistic are actually showing up. Are they close to the assumed uh, population average of 275, or are they really far out in the tail and unlikely to occur? So give a brief description of that. And then what is the final decision of the hypothesis test? And this is always based upon the significance level, alpha, which in our case is 0 0.05. If the p-value is less than alpha, we always reject the null hypothesis. We have statistically significant evidence that the null hypothesis is not true and we should accept the alternative as true instead. If the p-value is greater than alpha, you do not have any statistically significant evidence. Um, you're not going to reject the null. You haven't proved it's true or anything. You just don't have enough evidence to reject it. And we say we fail to reject the null hypothesis in that case. So is your p-value less than alpha or greater than alpha? That'll determine your decision. And in the conclusion, write a paragraph, kind of put everything in layman's terms, like you're explaining it to the CEO or something. Uh, sum up what all your calculations and 
that you did up above here, what they meant, what your results are, and then what you recommend. Should we let this rep run the ad that his average is larger than the population average, or do we not have evidence to support that ad and so we shouldn't run it? Let me know if you have any questions. I'll uh, be happy to provide additional help as needed, and good luck.